Welcome to Your Next Stop. This is Juliet Hahn. I am a wife, mom, virtual coach, public speaker, and crazy obsessed dog lover. I am so honored to be able to take you into the life of someone that has followed a passion. Every week, I hope you are as inspired as I am. Welcome to Your Next Stop. Hey guys, welcome to your next stop. Another wonderful episode with someone that has followed a passion and or hobby and turned it into a career. So welcome, Cindy. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm good. So I'm really excited for Cindy to get into uh, her story because it is different than any other person I've had on and it is really, really fascinating. So Cindy and I met at Cindy Howard, correct? You are um, a Houston area artist, right? Yep. And, um, and we met, was it another, are you another clubhouse person? Another clubhouse person. That's right. <laughs> so, so my listeners are going to be like, okay, another, because literally the last <laughs> bunch, not all of them, because there are others that I've like linked in or I've known, you know, I've been put in touch with people, but you mm-hmm. are another clubhouse. And I, this is, we've been trying to actually record for a couple uh, months now. Right. We yeah. have. So Cindy, tell us a little bit, not even a little bit, but all of your story. Like, how did you get where you are? What are you doing? And all that great information. Okay. So all of this started a long time ago, feeling <laughs> old, but, <laughs> but for almost two and a half decades now, uh, I have a business partner and I, we have a decorative painting company. We do murals, plasters, faux finishing, you know, just everything. It's like this wall behind it. I was just going to, I was going to pause you. And so you guys, if you're listening to the audio portion, you're not seeing this, but if you go to my YouTube channel, you will see this, this, um, that this episode and, um, it is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. So anyway, but how it all happened, um, it just so happened that we're raising little girls and they end up in the same ballet class. And so, you know, they're asking for help with backdrops and things like that. And so of course, Dana and I, I mean, we just met, um, but we're both, yeah, we'll help. And then the next year, they end up with the same kindergarten teacher. And so, Uh you know, it's just like meant to happen. Um, So we start doing all of the face painting and the, the, you know, boards in the room and, you know, just all the creative stuff for, you know, school and everything. Next thing you know, we are being, you know, just doing all kinds of like, crazy big walls for uh, the dance uh, company because it went beyond just being little girls in dance. They went on to big girls in dance. So one day she called me and said, hey, why don't you come over and help me faux paint my living room? And I said, what's that? (laughs) (laughs) I had no idea. So anyway, uh, yeah, so we did it. And then people started asking us to do theirs because, you know, it turned out pretty. And um, then we're like, as we're starting to do other things, we're thinking some of these products don't do what we want them to very well. They're not very friendly. So it just so happens I had another friend that does the same thing. Um, and I asked her, what, you know, what should we be using? She said, okay, very first thing you need to do is take some classes. And so I'm going, oh, okay, you know, that, that sounds like a, a reasonable thing to learn how to use it, the products and the tools. Yeah, because I want, I want, I want, yeah, I want to pause you for a second, just so because uh-huh. so my my listeners can understand. So you had you and this woman Deanna, your partner. Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on one second. Okay. <coughs> Got all of a sudden a tickle in my throat. <coughs> That's what I get for throwing down my lunch. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, so let let's let me take you back really quickly for my listeners. So, mm-hmm. you you and your your partner now, mm-hmm. your business partner, you guys were your kids were in dance together, and right. so if anyone that does not have any like a child that's in dance behind, it's like any kind of scene, any kind of stage always has a backdrop. Mm-hmm. So they asked for parent helpers, which they always do. And you guys were like, oh, we'll jump up. So can you tell us really quickly, like, what was that first backdrop? What was that? Like, did you guys paint something? Did you just put like florals on? Like, what, what do you remember? Can you take us there? Um, I know, well, there were a couple of different ones. And then I, I can't remember, uh, you know, chronologically. But there was one year we actually did, we built an Oscar uh, award 
put, you know, with the chicken right. wire and all kinds of stuff and, you know, plaster and everything. Um, and we made a huge globe, a textural globe. I mean, it was amazing how wow, realistic okay. it looked, you know, things like that. Yeah. Right. So, we so yeah. Went crazy. Yeah. So it wasn't just like, you know, a sheet and painting on it. So you guys were actually creating things for stages. So then yeah. as your girls grew, you were getting more and more involved in this. And then your friend said, Hey, can you just come over and do this? Cause you, you guys obviously became friendly and you were like, you know, enjoyed each other's company. And she's like, yeah. you're talented. You're and so you're like, Oh, we'll, we'll go and paint her room. Then as people saw this, they were like, can you guys do it for us? So when you're talking about the tools, are you talking about the actual paint and the paint brushes or what, like the supplies? So if you can just explain that, cause I like literally don't understand any of this. And so I'm sure uh -huh. there's some people that are listening that are like, what is she talking about? So I just want to kind gotcha. of create the picture for them. Yes. Okay. So by using, you know, paints that are on the wall and then it's layers, sometimes it's glazes, sometimes it's plasters. Um, we started with glazes initially and with metallic glazes and things like that. Um, and when you glaze the wall, it matters what is behind the glaze. So Got it. History, one of my favorite sayings, and my and the crew is sick of hearing me say it, is history shows. So right. whatever you put down first, how you put it down, always shows in the end. You can't have a bad start to have a beautiful beginning. You need to have it beautiful every time. Got so it. Okay. That's what we were trying to learn is what products work with what things and how to apply them to make them as beautiful as they possibly can. So. Got it. Okay. So that makes sense. Okay. So now you're doing, you're doing a living with walls and now you have other people that are commissioning you guys. Like we will pay you to do this. And this is before you guys went into business, correct? So what, what were, what was your, were you a stay at home mom or did you have another career? Yes. Uh, stay at home. Well, before I had kids, I started going to art school. Okay, so um, you're going to art school. Okay. Yeah, and husband was very supportive. And so, uh, one second. I am so sorry. No, don't even worry about it. <coughs> I had a coughing fit. Okay, so I went to art school before I had kids. And when I was pregnant, I stopped. And my husband was very supportive of me going to art school. He was the one that kind of talked me into finally going. Um, he's like, you know, before we have kids, da, 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 do, you know, do everything you want to do. So I'm like, ah, okay. So I'm going to art school. I'm getting my convertible. Hi. Right. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> and I swear the day I got it. <laughs> what happened? I love so that. Anyway, yeah. So yes. Um, so after, you know, that, then I was, my, my goal in life was to be an amazing mom. That yep. was my most the most important thing I felt is that the job could possibly be. So then I had my daughter almost two years later, had my son, and then a couple of years later, uh, we found out my son has autism. Okay. So I not only became the stay at home mom, but like the seeker of knowledge. Oh, you well, you have to be an advocate. So like my, so I, Absolutely. This, I, I decided to stay home with my kids. I was very fortunate. I was able to do the same and we have dyslexia in my family and my oldest. So it was this, like, I just was like, okay, now I need to know all of this. And that is a full-time job being the advocate of your child. Okay. So thank right. you. Thank you for, uh, for pointing that out because that is, it is, that is something that also changed the dynamic of the house and you need to do so many different things. So, um, yes. with a child with autism. Yes. And not in a bad way, just in a different no. way. No. Yeah, yeah, different. So, yeah, no. Yeah. In a very loving, like you you embrace it with everything. Okay, what does this child need? How can I help this child live, you know, the most successful life? And so it's all Absolutely. those things that you have to do, 100%. Right. Right. I get that. So, yeah, no, so I appreciate you painting that picture because that does, it, like, I want my listeners who are listening who could be going through the same thing, knowing, okay, so you are, were still an advocate, but then you also, th these doors kept opening up for you. So, how old was your son right. when your daughter was in that first dance class? Um, he was, it was before he was diagnosed. No, it was probably, gosh, right? Yeah, it was before he was diagnosed. Okay, um, so he was little, he, so he was really young. I mean, she was, well, okay, diagnosed, technically diagnosed. Yes. Uh, yeah, because she started dance. Like so, right. um, when he was diagnosed, I had him in all kinds of, you know, therapies and things. I mean, there's, there's no way I could have had a full-time job at that time or even, right. you know. Forever. But uh, after Dan and I started playing with 
doing the you know decorative painting and stuff that you know for it, it was like a hobby for us in a way and then started to become a job um, when he was in elementary school that's when we started really building our company and right okay yeah because we were the nine to three crew mm -hmm. you know we at three o'clock you know you're off you're you're one of us at least was there to the school to collect the kids and by the time that you know i had two and she had two they all fit and you know we get vans <laughs> right everybody can fit right so yeah um, yeah so we we made sure uh the kids were still fire ready Right. And Thank you know you. what I love? I love what you said there, though, is it's that you started doing this as a pa like a, as a hobby. But this is the thing that's really important. And this is what this whole, you know, why I'm doing this podcast is mm -hmm. it is a hobby, but it was filling a creative passion in your life. So it was fulfilling you all yes. the stuff that you had to handle all the stuff as a mom, all the stuff is with, you know, with, with a child with autism, you were still tapping into something that was important to you. And you maybe didn't even realize it, right. But so the universe or God, however, you know, I believe in God, but you know, not everyone does. So it was opened, right? He kept putting things or she kept putting things in your path to be like, Hey, I think you should try this. Hey, I think you try, try this because they knew what was happening, right? They knew that your son was going to be diagnosed. And so it was like, let's give you some strength here and give you some things that you're really going to be able to embrace. So as you move forward, as you tackle this next chapter of your life, you're going to already know how to take care of and self care for yourself. So I love that that all kind of was like baby steps and all those little, those little like, Oh, wait, this is interesting. Oh, here's something else. I am talented. Oh, and this is filling my cup. So I love that. I love, love that. Absolutely. And it gets better. <laughs> Oh, great. Okay. I love this. Okay. Go, go for it. Uh, it gets hard and it gets better. Um, so my husband's fortune 500. Okay. So, so your husband was fortune 500. That's where you go. Yep. Yeah. Husband was fortune 500. I keep consultant, you know, big guy. He had great insurance, you know, good job. And, um, his mother was diagnosed with cancer. So since she was in Ohio and we're in Texas, we felt like she needed to be here with us. And plus, you know, Houston, Texas has some of the greatest medical facilities and cancer research, yes. you know, and all that stuff. So she did, she came here and um, it became kind of a, a full-time thing to, to take care of all the visits and treatments and everything that she needed. So um, we made a decision that for take quality time as, as long as we could be with her, um, that he should be her caregiver. Okay. And so he quit his job and wow. took care of his mom. And yeah, beautiful. And, I was just going to say, I'm totally get choked <laughs> up because that is, that is really beautiful. That is very yeah. beautiful. So this was all going on. And then, uh, 2008 happened. I uh, remember 2008. Yeah. Yes, so I, I remember. Did. We moved out of the city because it was like, oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> we had two homes and it was like, okay, things could change. We, 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 that's a whole nother story. But yes, yeah. I remember 2008 because then I also, my third was born in 2009. So, mm -hmm. yes. So then when he went to go get back into the workforce, it wasn't the same. It right. wasn't, you know, the same world. So, but for some weird reason, <laughs> our company was going strong. Right. And yeah. So we just kept building. And as we kept building, um, it, he, and he's totally supportive, you know, in, in that, um, then, but other things started happening down the road, you know? So, and our, our son graduated high school and all that kind of stuff. And someone needed to be there for him. Right. So he became caregiver for our son right so and then when everything happened with the pandemic well we got him into a uh, a work uh, job program okay yeah um so that was amazing Hold on. so we got him into a job program that was amazing um but then during the pandemic everything shut down so right. for over a year he was Stephen, was our son was out of the job program so my husband jeff once again became full-time right it's t totally fine your ear it keeps falling out i don't know why. it's crazy hold on yeah no worries try something
Take your time. Don't worry. Don't Very get stressed. Patient. No, but uh, please, um, don't be stressed. Okay, that should do it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, don't worry. Seriously, don't be stressed. So just take a breath. Okay. You're good. Yeah. No, no, no. This is an uh, this is an awesome story. Aw. So when the pandemic came around, um, the job program had to shut down, and my husband came full time caregiver again to our son, and all of this going on it just the evolution of my work and our company so many people couldn't work at the time but we could because right we're painters and in texas we were considered essential workers right so we're just i've been blessed all along yes so and so many different yeah and you know what? And also, this is, I'm sure, and, and you can say yes or no, but like during the pandemic, uh, even though like since you were able to do that, I'm sure people were like, we just want some change. We just want something happy. We just want something. So they were like looking for you even more. They were like seeking you out because it was like, we just, you know what? I hate this room. I've been in this room all the time. Can you please liven that up? Is that what happened? They, yeah. I mean, they were so tired of seeing their walls. <laughs> they were right. So many people said that. I mean, we have been in here looking at these walls, realizing we need something here or we don't like this or, right. or the furniture because we do furniture also. So all of those things. And not only that, I have also uh, started doing a lot of artwork and started my own art company. So that's also something that's helped along the way people are starting you know they're they're wanting more art and you know as a lot of people have started asking for whites and grays in their home and the color is leaving their home they're right. starting to realize oh we need some color we right need to live in this room up a little bit so art was a fantastic solution for that um and then along the way also i started an online art class for big art so, so smart. So you have that entrepreneur. I mean, that, that is obviously right. innate in, innate in you. Now, were your um, parents or siblings, were, did you come from entrepreneur back, background or it was just really just more of your... I think part of the thing was that we were, I say we were in the Air Force. My dad was in the Air Force. So okay. we moved around my whole life into like middle school, you know, junior high. So... I saw so many things and I, you know, experienced so much in travel. I think yeah. that has helped really in my creativeness. Um, but as for entrepreneur, my my oldest sister, uh, she and her husband had a jewelry store, but it was a family jewelry store, but still entrepreneur. And they still, she still has that jewelry store. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And then um, other than that, no, everybody's. Now, were you like, were you the kid that was, um, that had like the lemonade stand, um, you know, or was like always doing, you know, making money or were you the kid that was always creating things and selling your painting as a kid or you just did it like, were you, did you paint when you were younger? Like, was that no, something that really. was, okay. Mm -mm, not, well, I did, whenever someone wanted like an art project in school, I was like all over it. And, you know, you know, you don't realize as, as you're growing up because teachers would be like, make you know, may I keep this project or, you know, some in fact, right. you know, think, oh, that's a nice compliment, you know, but you're not thinking, oh, this is something I could actually do. So right. when my dad retired and we ended up going back to a small town in Mississippi where my grandparents all lived and, you know, it was time for them to start my, my parents to start taking care of, you know, my grandparents in a way, you know, is that, yes. um, mm -hmm. you know, family responsibility. So anyway, by that happening, I ended up going to a high school that didn't even have an art program. Oh, wow. But, I mean, they had other, you know, there was like, uh, they did theater type programs and stuff okay. like that. So if somebody wanted to volunteer to help with backdrops. Right, you I were did, able to do that. Know, right, like right, right. Just got to happen. But um, yeah, so I always had it in my soul and I always jumped at the chance of doing anything artistic. Uh, right, I, which I, I love. Never know it, I never knew I could, it could be my future and not my parents, but I, I know there's a lot of parents out there that don't encourage kids to be in the arts. And that's really sad. Yeah. Because let me tell you, it's kind of saved us and you can make a business out of it. You can <laughs> grow and, and employ other people. I mean, we have other people that work for us. It's not just us, you know? Right. So, and I love I mean, it. And I, yeah, yeah go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Sad. I, Sorry. I think 
when you can employ other people with your company, you're giving back in a way also and helping other people have better lives. So yes. that makes me feel good. Yeah, no, that's so true. And you know what? It's funny because when you said that, so I came from an athletic background, so I played sports, but, um, and this is what I talk about all the time. And this is one of the reasons why I created the course, my online course that is just launching is, um, it's helping people find and tap into their creative passion and make it into a money, money making business. And the reason why I want people to understand that is I was always told I, and I don't know who it was. It wasn't my parents because I have very supportive parents, but somewhere down the line, someone told me I wasn't artistic. I wasn't creative, right? I was an athlete to stick with what you know. So, um, and I talk about this on my podcast a lot. I actually talk about this in my course. Um, is that I never thought of myself as creative. So when I had kids and it was because I didn't enjoy coloring, it, you know, it wasn't that easy for me to stay in the lines. And, you know, I was always like the fast moving kid and I didn't sit down and do that stuff. And it didn't fill something inside of me, which is fine. So I just deemed myself as non-creative. And as I got older, I actually went to, when I went to college, I went, um, I changed my major to communications, radio, television, and film. And I just recently found a script that I wrote. I wrote an actual pilot for a TV show, and it's really good. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I forgot that I did this. I directed a movie. It wasn't things that I really, truly enjoyed, though. Like, I liked it, but it wasn't. Like, I went to, when I went to college, and my I became um, in sales. I loved sales, but I love relationships. I love people. And so, again, I thought, okay, th those people that were in my major, there was like four of us that were in the sales, you know, they're like, they're like, there's always four or five that want to go the sales route. Everyone else wants to stay in the creative side because I was like, oh, I'm not creative. But I also did enjoy the sales side, right? So I sat mm -hmm. in that, that, that class and I never, I'll never forget, I was listening and the professor started talking about advertising sales. And I was like, oh, that's totally what I want to do. And it was really cool for me to like have that thing. So it wasn't that I was like, oh, I'm not creative, so I have to do this. I really did enjoy, but I think it was more of, again, the people, because I wasn't the type of person that was, uh, like money didn't drive me. It was more of like, pleasing my my boss or not even so much pleasing my boss but like if there was I wanted always to have the the highest sales so I was recognized like that's like my thing I love the recognition that's just you know who I was and not in an egotistical way but that's like what drove me so it was like oh I can make all these sales and then I can be called out in like the big auditorium as the high so that's what got me right it wasn't like my commission check or anything like that but I think what what you said is you know so I always deemed myself as not creative I just you know and it wasn't like a negative thing I didn't put myself down but I just I'm not creative and then when I had kids same thing you know we would do arts and craft and they would say hey mommy can you draw this and I would always say, oh I can only do stick figures mommy's not that good at drawing you know I'm not creative blah 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 and I get, kept kept that narrative and then as I got older and I started the podcast and I started doing more social media and I started coming up with like business ideas. And I always, even like when my kids were little, I always had like the invention. I was like, Oh, I'm going to make this because I think this would be really good. And then all of a sudden I read the book, big magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Yes. And I remember first, do you, have you read that? Yes. <laughs> beautiful book right Love and that's it. not that's not a typical book I would read I would normally not read that and I listen because I'm dyslexic so I always listen to my books um oh you're dyslexic no I'm, I listen to my book oh you listen to book. okay I, I, I think I am a little bit but I've never been diagnosed but go ahead right right no right it's what it's I mean there's you know the spectrum you know with autism there is spectrums of things and so I totally get that um so I read that book. And I remember when I first started reading it, I was like, I don't know why I'm reading this. It's about creativity and being like, and writing and like, I'm dyslexic. I'm not a great writer, but like I do a ton of stuff on social media, you know, and I always have to check it and all that stuff. But I never thought of myself as an actual writer or like creator. And then as I was listening to that book, I was like, wait a second, what am I talking about? I'm so creative. And you know what? When I'm creating, I'm the happiest. And yeah. then it was like this whole like, boom, it was this whole mind shift. And it was like, you know, I created a whole podcast and I didn't even know what I was doing. I told my family that I was starting a podcast and I started a podcast. I was like, <laughs> how can I say I'm not creative? That's ridiculous, right? So from there, then when I created this online course, so that's what the course is about. It's helping people find their creative passion or hobby and turn it into a money-making career. And it doesn't even, you could also, it could be something where you uh, have done a charity. So it's not like that you, you are making your own money, mm -hmm. but you can. 
but it's making money for others, you know, and, and that it's really however your, your cup is filled. But um, so I love that you said that because I think there is a lot of people that are like, oh, you can't make money in the arts. You can't make money. You can't do this. And it's that narrative that people are, that no one should have a narrative. Everyone should find their own narrative, right? They should make their own narrative, not be told. And in society, we do it. I mean, there's times... I probably have done it to my kids and I'm not proud of it. I can't think of a, you know, a, I try not to, like, I'm very conscious of it. Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. there is, you know, there is like a, a narrative that we do. So but we want to protect them, you know, I'm right. sure is part of it, but yes, discouraging them from that field. I just, and I've learned over time just how, you know that that's not right that everybody you know are always they're always saying oh that could be your hobby but you don't want it to be your job you know no no it can really be your job you can actually love coming to work every single day day. yes i love that i love that you just said that now does your husband is he a part of the company as well or does he like does he do anything with it or no he no no uh poor thing he's (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he is brilliant my husband is absolutely brilliant if i ever need um help with any kind of uh you know finance questions any kind of uh you know whatever economy any kind of you know whatever uh, business and stuff like that yeah business, any kind of anything like that you know he's the guy to go to but i've actually asked him to take off an area like a, the breakfast nook in our house Honey, could you take this off? And when I come home, I was, you know, going to paint it. And when I got home, I told him he's fired. <laughs> <laughs> but because, but it's not his passion, right? But he supports no. you because my husband's the same. My husband supports all of this, but yeah. he's he doesn't want to get involved in it. Like he's right. like, no, that's that's your thing. I'm like proud of you that you're doing that, but that's your thing. Because there's been times where I'm like, ooh, you know, now that I'm creating this and it's really becoming something, could we, you know, could we work together? And it's not that he doesn't want to work with me, but he's like, yeah, I don't, I like that's you, that's your thing. I like to have my own thing, which is very understandable. Yeah. Um, and it's good that they know that. Yeah. One day, you know, later down the road, as I, you know, slow down. Oop, um, you're frozen. And I want, huh? I'm sorry. One day when I slow down and I'm a little bit older, um, I. Oh, wait, hold up. Wait, wait, pause for a second. You, Mm -hmm. you totally froze. So you said, okay. Um, yeah, you, you said one day and that's where we lost you. Okay. All right. So one day when I'm older, (laughs) which I'm old now, (laughs) not really, I don't feel old. I don't think. No, you're not 90, a (laughs) hundred, 90, a hundred. That's old. Not now. (laughs) But, you know, further down the road, let's say, um, I, you know, I could see him being part of something that I do, maybe help right. with, you know, something. I'm not quite sure. But um, that and that would be fun for us as long as he would enjoy it. I would right. never ask my husband to be part of a company and do something that he's not enjoying because, you know, there's someone else out there that will enjoy that. There's a lot of different hats that people can wear in a company. And if I don't wear my accounting hat i don't wear bookkeeping hat okay i i don't wear the uh, my website that that goes to somebody else i don't i don't wear that hat but i do the social media i do the art you know things like that so find what you're really good at when you have a business and if you've got other people to support you in doing these other jobs you're only going to grow with your business because you're really you know hitting it you're you're doing the best you can but the part that you're best at smart and that's where and it, it shows right like outsource the things you like i don't like editing Absolutely. that was the first thing i was like i did it for five <laughs> seconds and i was like oh no that's not going to make me want to love podcasting so i found an editor i was like i'm gonna have to outsource that and right. even if it's not in someone's budget i always say you can find you can move things around do you really need that starbucks coffee like or that you know that drink or from dunkin donuts like there's things that you can do that you can find it so like right. don't make yourself small so cindy shout out all your social medias where can people find you and then yeah I, i'm like i love this and i want to see you know more of your work I, I mean i follow you on instagram so i've seen your stuff it's really it's really fantastic you are very very talented oh thank you yeah we're a team we're we're a great team and that's what i love about it for so long we've uh, been very uh creative very um the energy is good, and I want that until the, the day we end this thing. But the uh, the company on Instagram is deckinfo, D-E-C dot N dot F-A-U-X. 
And then my own art is Cindy Howard, C-I-N-D-H-O-W-A-R-D underscore artist. And then on, you want Facebook too? Yeah, sure. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So Facebook, it's decorative and faux finishes. Uh, we're out of Houston, Texas. Uh, and then I'm Cindy Regan Howard. So I love up. that. So Cindy, also tell it, tell us what take, we have a couple more minutes. So tell us like uh-huh. one of your favorite projects. Do you have like one that you can pinpoint? Well, my favorite right now is big art. That's, uh, it's one of my things that, uh, designers are coming to me for, uh, cause we work with a lot of designers with the decorative finishing and everything. Right. So they started reaching out to me. As a matter of fact, one of them, urged me to start doing big art for one of her projects. Missy is like, you know, my, uh, she's like a soulmate, you know, we just go to each other for ideas. Yeah. And so, uh, she got me to do a 13 foot high by nine foot wide collage of paintings that it just kind of put a boom to everything. That's so that's gotta be one of my favorites. I love yeah. that. Okay, yeah. and I also want I want to take back for a second. So, was it you or Deanna that was like, "Let's make this a business," or did it just happen to make like it just became a business? Like there wasn't like either of you were like, "Let's let's go for this," or was it just like after that first you know living room wall and you got people, you were like, "Okay, I guess this is a business." So how how did that happen? It really did evolve into that, but I would say probably more her because she had another company before, and so she kind of knew the ropes and that kind of thing. Um, and I had never had the company before, so. Got it. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on and telling your story. And everyone, you guys have to check her out because she does amazing stuff, like pops of color. It's just really, really, really cool. So um, I ask everyone now at the end of the podcast, what does Crazy Town mean to you? I love Crazy Town. I, I love to listen to you and your energy. It's amazing. I love listening to the passion of people, and I love that crazy I can be as crazy as I want I am like this I'm like this crazy McGalver that does all you know weird things and I like to make my own tools and all kinds of stuff and just any kind of thing in life that uh, helps you just kind of reach your uh, your fun I guess that's what's so amazing so I love that. I love that crazy town is a positive thing because it is. It's my energy. Crazy town is exactly that. So I love that that is what it is for you. So again, thank you, Cindy, so much for taking the time and uh, finally getting uh, with us getting together to <laughs> share your story. And um, it's just, it's really cool. I can't wait to follow your journey and see all the d- uh, other things that you're creating. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Juliet. Guys, if you like what you hear, you know what to do. Go rate, review, subscribe, share these episodes, and definitely go follow Cindy. Um, Because you also, Cindy, you you commit, like people can commission you from all over. You're not just local, correct? Yeah, I've I've shipped out to at least seven states so far. So yeah, I would love to go countrywide. So yeah, yeah, all right. So yep, go check her stuff out. And if you guys need that art, you need that cut pop of color, uh, look Cindy up. So we'll see you next week with... (laughs) two more people that have followed a passion. So don't forget we're here Monday and Wednesday. And then guys, also I have my, my workshop that is live. So don't forget to go check out. I am com, and you can, there's a free ebook there and there is the workshop. So definitely check it out and um, we'll see you guys next week. I hope you liked this episode of your next stop. Please subscribe to my channel, share with your friends and join in each week. 